Welcome. In this class, we would focus on names, the types of names, outliers and inliers. So, in the last class, we already talked about last few classes. We have talked about uh, unconformity. We have talked about superposition. Just a quick overview of everything before we proceed further. So that would make the lecture easier. Now, as we said, the different layers are deposited into the rock segments in the layers which are called as bed now these bed if it is a sedimentary rock we call them as strata this strata could be horizontal strata it could be an inclined strata based on the topography of the region again each of these bed if it is very very thin let's say one centimeter or less it is called as lamination or lamina also we need to understand that this bed let's say is deposited 10,000 years old but this bed was 1 million years old. So between the two, there is an unconformity, right? Now, if this unconformity is denoted by a parallel line, it is called as paraconformity. If, let's say, this was the old rock on which there was erosion that took place. So if you look onto this hand structure, this is the easiest way to explain. You would have some things, some rock materials that would be eroded. Now, what would happen is on the top of this, you would see another rock that would be superimposed. So as you can see, this is the old rock and this is the new rock. So new rock on the top of the old rock and this unconformity would be called as disconformity. Why it would be called as disconformity? Because this rock structure has eroded a little of it. Now, consider both of them are sedimentary. So we call them as disconformity. Consider that this was igneous or metamorphic and this is sedimentary. In that case, this would be called as non-conformity. So that's the simplest way to understand. You can just keep your hands like this and you can see how the groove formation explains the erosions. Now, if the rock structure as we have seen is eroded, you see there is a folding. There can be a faulting where you have two rock structures and one moves over the other and then presses another and gives an overturn that can be seen in the topography. So it could be a structure that could appear like this where this old rock comes over the new rock in the case of a reverse fault and this reverse fault when it is less than uh, 45 degrees we call this as a thirst fault and this thirst fault when it is further steeper we call this as nape. Now, we would come to an ape in a while, but before that, let's talk about outliers and inliers. So in our previous class, we have seen this is in, uh, syncline and this is anticline. So anticline, uh, as the name starts with A, the structure is similar to the A. And you have old rock in the center, young rock as you move towards the periphery. However, in a syncline, you have the young rock in the center and the old rock in the periphery. So outliers are classified as young rocks in the center and old rocks outside. However, inliners are classified as old rocks in the center followed by young rocks on the periphery. Clear? So far we have understood what is this. Now this outlier and inlier could, could occur because of three phenomena. What are those three phenomena? It could be because of folds, it could be because of fault, it could be because of erosion that can take place. Now if we come to this diagram, you would understand that this was the initial rock structure. Now with this initial rock structure, there was a dilation or a loss of volume and this was a kind of detachment that occurred. Now decolement is also called as detachment. So this rock mass, the top rock mass detached from the bottom one and started to move. If it moved parallel to one another or opposite to one another, we call it as pure shear. But when it's moving, it is kind of creating folds within that. And this is called as buckles. So we call it as buckling. And when this buckling is further strong, there is imbecration or thrust and each of this leg is called as horse. So each of them appear of the shape of horse. So each of them would be separately called as horse. So under imbrication or thrusting, there is the host and there is a detachment from the bottom layer which occurs. Now, these contractional deformations actually lead to shortening of the rock. So initially the rock was this, when there was a compaction, what happened, this rock became smaller, shorter. This was due to gravitation, this was due to tectonics, this was due to folding and faulting, various phenomena that we can assign it to. Now, 